Good morning, everyone. As most of you probably already know, the Bible opens up with the story of creation. It establishes that God created the entire universe from absolutely nothing. Before the universe's existence, God was alone in nothingness, which is definitely beyond human comprehension. In our world, we can only imagine everything having an origin, but God is without origin. So I'll just leave that there, although that's a lot to think about, and you could probably spend a very long time thinking about that. But creation, the story of creation, it goes like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So the first thing that God done, does here is that he creates heaven and earth as locations. But he still hasn't given them life and shape. He's just given them existence. They exist, but there doesn't seem to be much more to them than that. The earth begins as a formless, void object with darkness covering it. Now, this is interesting because a formless, void, dark object would not be something that humans could inhabit. Could you imagine the chaos living in a planet without light? let alone a planet without form like some gas planet in our galaxy that has no permanence. It's uninhabitable. So God looks at this dark, misshapen planet and says, let there be light. Then he divides light from darkness. And in this, he creates the process where the sun shines light on earth and the earth rotates in such a way that we have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Now, there's something just beyond creating the sun that is happening here that I want to highlight. Humans fear darkness. You may say you like the dark and you're more of a night person, but I guarantee that if you were locked in a room receiving no light for a week that you would probably go crazy. We are irrational in the darkness. You walk in the forest at night and you hear a twig snap and you instantly think that's a bear or a murderer. It's probably a squirrel, but we are very afraid in the dark. We think everything is a threat. We're afraid of every single thing. A lot of kids, they use light, night lights for the very reason that if they do not have light in their room, they'll become afraid because they cannot see around them. We rely so much on our sight. And so when our sight becomes limited, we just assume that everything is dangerous and unknown. If you've ever woken up in the night scared, I guarantee that one of the very first things you did is you switched on the light so that you could see your surroundings. Darkness is chaos. Chaos is defined as complete disorder and confusion. If you don't believe me that darkness is chaos, I challenge you that tonight in the middle of the night, you stick your hand, just your hand, into a dark room where you can't see anything. And then just allow your mind to wander about what could possibly bite it off. Even though it seems irrational, if we don't have our sight, we immediately descend into a chaotic state where everything becomes a threat and nothing is familiar. So when God says, let there be light, he is establishing a precedent that he is the only one who can organize chaos. He is the only one who can push back that darkness. If order is the juxtaposition to chaos and light is contrasted with darkness, then the creator of all light is the one who makes the order. God is the one who gives the light. He provides the structure to a very chaotic existence. If God had not introduced the light into our world, you would be crawling around on all fours, feeling around in the darkness to try to grab onto something with permanence. And God has shown he's capable of reintroducing that chaos. In ancient Egypt, as Israel is being held captive, God brings a plague of darkness and takes away all visibility of the sun, causing chaos in Egypt, and they were very panicked. The Bible says in Revelation that God will cause darkness over the face of the whole earth for a period of time. Because God can remove the order, that tells me that God is still actively establishing order. He's still providing light for us still making sense of this messy universe for us. God intentionally separates the darkness and the light in creation because chaos and order need to be separated. In many ancient civilizations, they emphasized the significance of the battle between chaos and order, but they got it all wrong because they thought that chaos was a god and order was a god, but really in reality, there's one god who's separating that order and the chaos. He's the creator of the chaos and the order, and he's the one who makes sense of our reality for us. You may question why the creator of light would even allow darkness to exist. 
Why separate them? Why not just put one thing out of complete existence and just keep light? Couldn't you just cause permanent light? Can't we just have permanent order? The problem with not having that balance is because if we could always see, if we could always have order, then we wouldn't ever rely on God to provide order. If your life was always in order, you wouldn't need to go to church, you wouldn't need a relationship with God, and you wouldn't need to rely on anybody for that matter. Constant order means that you can forget about the chaos and just live a luxurious life free of fear. That probably sounds great to you, but God kept that chaos for a reason. You need to rely on Him. You have to learn to rely on God to provide light in your life. You have to learn to lean on Him to make sense of your chaos, provide meaning to what could be a meaningless existence. There's a lot of people out there who aren't relying on God for meaning, for order, and if you look at their lives, it is chaotic. There's one word that can describe our world right now, and that is chaotic. People are not making sense. They're not having a clue about what's going on. They're living their lives in darkness, and it makes them see everything and everyone as a threat. We have the answer to that. If you trust in God, you have someone who pushes back the darkness, the chaos, and the destruction to establish light, order, and life. There's a song that we sing that God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. Jesus said this in John 12 and 46, I have come as, as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. You see, Jesus invited us to come out of that darkness. There's no need to stay in the darkness any longer. Come into the light. Come into the order. Jesus was order embodied. He was the antonym to chaos, living among men. And if you believe in him, then you don't have to live in the dark anymore. All of the things in your life that are chaotic, your depression, your anxiety, your disease, your sickness, your fear, your addiction, your health condition, whatever it is in your life, there is an answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus came to be the light in the world, and he is available this very day to provide you with a solution to the chaos. You're not going to find it anywhere else. Come to the light. Pastor Nick preached a sermon this past Sunday, Let the Light In. Let there be order to your chaos. Let there be truth in your world of lies. Let there be light. Listen, I know we're going to a place where the Bible says the Lamb is the light. And right now, it's annoying to live in a world where we only have 12 hours of light and then we have to spend 12 hours in darkness. But in the New Jerusalem, there's good news. There is no more night. In eternity, there is no more chaos. There is only order. Our God will establish an eternity of order that will be so beautiful and wonderful that there simply could not be a better existence imagined. I'm looking forward to that light, that complete order, that end to chaos. But for now, in my time here on earth, I have to learn to trust in the light that God has given us. He came down in the flesh as Jesus to provide us with a way to access that light. And you have the opportunity today to establish order in your life. And the world cannot offer that to you. So thanks for joining me for devotion today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let the light in.